Good morning, everyone. Today we're going to be talking about hermaphrodites. Um, I had a dream years ago that um, I was a hermaphrodite, which means male and female. And I had, of course, woke up out of that dream thinking, oh, this is insane, and just blew it off. I've never forgotten the dream. I still have it very, mem uh, very vividly in my memory, <clears throat> which also lets me know it's not a dream <laughs> because I remember it like a memory. So I've been watching Martin Lika on um, Flat Earth British, and he's been talking about these hermaphrodites. So <clears throat> yesterday I was talking to Arthur, and I'm like, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and look into this <clears throat> hermaphrodite and see what's going on about it. Okay, so here we go. <laughs> well, <clears throat> the first thing I noticed when I looked into the hermaphrodite was that, of course, they were male and female. But there was a really strong characteristic within them that I thought was <clears throat> astonishing. First off, <clears throat> you always see them half-dressed or what have you, whatever. But when I actually went there and I witnessed them for me remote viewing, they almost had a non-existent libido. Um, however they were designed, which I will get into that, um, on a certain level, um, <clears throat> they simply did not have a sex drive. It was, if I had to put it on a scale of 1 to 10, I'd say it was a 1. <laughs> so it looks like the only time they ever did anything really was for procreation and it just wasn't uh, prevalent in them. They, they didn't have the need or the want, basically, like we do. So <clears throat> I went into them, into their physicality, their brain, to see what's going on. Why don't they have a sex drive? And so this is what I saw. We have the mammalian part of the brain, which is the lower half, which controls all your automated systems. And then we have <clears throat> mainly the two brain lobes on the left and the right hemisphere of brain lobes. When I looked into them, the hermaphrodites, I noticed that they did not have the mammalian part of the brain at all. And they had one single brain. It wasn't split in two. And then we're going to veer off here for a minute. Um, I was like, why? Why? Why don't they have, why do their brains look so differently? So then I was looking into it and I saw that <clears throat> there were a group of beings and some of them, not many, that were creating chimeras. Chimeras are when you take two species and splice them together that would no way in nature ever be like a human and a horse or a human and a, and a fish or a fish and a goat or whatever. And it looked like um, they were creating these chimeras and they had taken the hermaphrodite species and divided them. And I thought, why would they do that? Um, when I also looked into them, they were putting all of their energies into metaphysical advancements. Um, because they didn't have the libido, they didn't put all that energy into procreation. So they diverted it into higher thinking, higher reality. It's really strange, but I guess you would. I also noticed that when they were a single unit, uh, male and female, um, they were very singular. They didn't have this need for a partner. They didn't have this want and need to have this partner relationship. So going back to when they were divided, it basically conquered them as beings. Yes, it's, it's just most insidious. It basically conquered them as beings. Um, what it did do was it made them unstable when they were divided. We think of it, oh, you're a man and a woman, that's disgusting, blah, 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 blah. But in reality, that is how they got to the higher reality because they no longer were focusing in that direction of uh, procreation, family, da 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 Just, they had it, but it was on such a small degree, their lifespans were much longer also. So there wasn't this need to procreate, procreate, procreate. They were also on a higher metaphysical level <clears throat> that they were not strictly in 3D, 4D, 5D. 
they were like going in and out and they could hold whatever vibration they wanted to. So basically, <clears throat> it was a conquering technique. So then I looked into it and I'm like, well, what happened to all these hermaphrodites and what happened to all the creations that they had uh, created? And um, I'm going to say humanity right now, as we stand, we were them. We are them. We are the outcome of splitting the hermaphrodite into a male and female species. And um, it's a great way to conquer a species because it puts everybody into a frame of, <clears throat> I'm not enough. I need someone to fill me, to complete me, to <clears throat> just not enough. And I need him or I need her or I need someone where in their scenario, they didn't need that. They were completely fulfilled within themselves. Um, yeah, very, very <clears throat> interesting. So I do know that with the chimeras, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, let me get a drink. <laughs> um, it's really tacky outside and heavy Kim trailing today. <clears throat> and it does affect me. So where was I at? So when I look at... Um, our brain, um, we were absolutely chimeria projects. Um, that mammalian part of our brain is reptilian. Of course it is. But I mean, truly from reptilian species. <laughs> and um, this whole thing with Darwinism, throw it in the garbage. There's no such thing. The only way we change is through manipulation. Biological manipulation. We don't just change <laughs> um, so when you see people that are born with tails or something like this it's already in your DNA code it's just that it gets activated and that's because we were messed with like chimeras chimeras <laughs> so genetic manipulation all the way and then I was looking at the um, I'm going to get a little graphic here I was looking at the genitalia of these uh, beings and noticed that um, they weren't fully female and they weren't and they and they weren't completely male and it's like they only had um, where their their urinary tract to actually you know pee um, went through the male genitalia. There was no female genitalia to um, to urinate. Um, the rectum was the same. <clears throat> it was a little bit different inside, but it was basically the same. Uh, the intestines inside was... <sighs> their intestines weren't as much as our intestines. Um, that also changed. Um, we have miles of intestinal tract, and they did not. They simply did not. Um, their organs were different also. Um, it looks like... <clears throat> A lot of things that are redundant on the male and female body were in full use with these um, hermaphrodites. I will give you an example. Male uh, nipples. Um, that's because we were hermaphrodites and that's a leftover for the male. Because males don't require nipples. Um, your appendix. Um, that, of course, <clears throat> was for a certain type of food that they ate that's not in this snow globe, and it was to filter out certain toxins, which since we don't eat that food anymore, it's redundant. Um, tonsils. Okay, this is a big one. Looks like the tonsils at one point had something to do with breathing in and out. And what it did was it changed the vibration. And we don't have that anymore. We don't We've lost that technique, plus it's atrophied because we don't use it like they did. But they actually use their whole throat and tonsils in a way to breathe, to change frequency, <laughs> to literally change frequency. So they could do these metaphysical things. And I thought, oh, man, we really lost that one. I mean, I lost my tonsils when I was in my 30s. But um, wow, if they wouldn't have atrophied and gotten rotten, <laughs> had to be taken out. What could we have done with those tonsils? Um, 
Let me think, what else do we have that is redundant in our systems? Well, we, I'm trying to think, nipples, tonsils, um, the appendix, anything else, I, I don't know. But it looks like all these things at one time were in full in use because they needed it for their reality, which we don't. Um, <clears throat> I know the genitalia, now this is gonna get a little graphic, so if you don't wanna hear this, just fast forward real quick. Looks like in the genitalia, the rectum was where the rectum was, then there was the, the vaginal opening, there was no clitoris, so um, then there were, above it, there were the testicles, which were half the size of the testicles of men today. Half the size. I mean, they were tiny, tiny. And um, their sacs were much closer to their body. And I guess it's because the testicles were so tiny. And of course, then they had a penis. And those varied depending on the being. I mean, you had small to large. <laughs> That still is the same. Um, I did notice that the clitoris was missing where women had that. And um, I know why that is because we needed a place to urinate. So that was created. Um, also, it changed um, how they had orgasms. Um, they did have two types. They had through the male reproductive, you know, the penis. And then they had through uh, the vaginal a, 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 I guess a deep orgasm. So they had two of them where women have two types through the, the clitoris and the vaginal. That was never a thing. And I'm sure that had to, a lot to do with another thing to do with why they were not sexually driven. Because when I also looked into them, I saw that their uh, male and female estrogen and testosterone were completely in balance, which means that they weren't over estrogen and they weren't over testosterone. They had this like balance. And I'm sure that had a lot to do with them not being sexual either. <laughs> so very interesting on that subject. Um, I do know that between the way their brain was designed, the way their genitalia was designed, they were literally on a higher evolution of reality um, when they had made us the way that we are and they divided us male to female, it really had lowered our evolution going upward and um, it had locked us down even further into lower negative vibrations. And of course, <clears throat> then at that point we had too much estrogen and too much testosterone and it really whacked us out. And so we not good. <laughs> I'm not saying that I want to be a hermaphrodite, but there was a lot of pluses to being one. You simply were not ruled by biology. <laughs> you were ruled by this and this. So, and I, I do know that, um, of course, there were, uh, in, in these um, hermaphrodites, um, they, um, oh, tiger. Let me let the cat out real quick. <laughs> Hmm. Sorry about that. <laughs> anyway, so looking at these hermaphrodites, um, yeah, they were uh, definitely on a different realm of reality and their physical world was more based in the metaphysical. So um, I hope no one's offended by me talking about the the inner workings and outer workings of them. <laughs> but um, I do see that it was a takedown of their species uh, when they um, were divided like that. All of us in this human body, male or female, we we were them. We, we were them. We were genetically created we were chimeras and um, we were them. So, um, I know it seems really strange, like, can you imagine being both? <laughs> but since they weren't really sexual like that, it was nothing. Um, it literally allowed them to go to a different realm of thinking. Energies were all pushed to a different place. 
um, which allowed them to be going in and out of dimensions, <clears throat> going in and out of realities, and reaching higher, much higher realms. So, okay, I guess I won't talk too much more about this, and um, very interesting. Okay, everybody have a great day.